Black Friday and happy Turkey Hangover America. Hope everybody's doing good and had a great time celebrating some holidays with family members and friends, loved ones, people dear to us. I hope everyone had a great holiday and that uh, we're all eating some delicious leftovers today. Being safe on a Black Friday sale. Are you a cyber sale type of person or are you going to go into, into the store? I think we asked that last year. But either way, my name is Arthur Ra. Super excited to be in here, having so much fun recording all of these awesome shows for the Discussion Combustion YouTube channel. And of course, I am joined by Kevin. You ain't living if it's not on the edge. Batstone. Let's full send it, baby. We're going all in on everything. What a great holiday it was. Hopefully you got that bird hit. If you've been watching this show long enough, I talked about getting that bird hit off that turkey, that trip to fan, and I know I'm feeling it today, Art. That was that was like in the beginning. That, that was, was Happy school. Friday Denver That days. was the first episode. Happy Friday Denver. First episode. It was, man. That was some good stuff. Of course, we're going to bring this in with the classic Today in History. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of stuff that I saw on there, and today was pretty dismal in history. There's some... Kind of crazy things that happened, Some all right? Here. So I'm going way back to the year 526. That's where I'm going to start this one. And this is a possible date, November 22nd. Uh, sorry, November 29th for the possible date for the Antonish earthquake in present-day Syria. Then it was the uh, Byzantine Empire. This earthquake killed 200,000 people. That's a mega quake. I mean, you're thinking about these older... You know, like non-quake construction techniques and all, all this type of stuff. Yeah, and like maybe it was like a mudslide type of situation. or Well, yeah, earthquakes, you know, we know they can cause tsunamis and a lot of other natural disasters occur from the earthquake. And mm-hmm. back then, they didn't have the structural integrity, or did they? I've heard that buildings were built quite strong back then. Well, yeah, and it, it depends It depends who was building it, right? Good point. So that that one's crazy. That one's crazy. I had to throw that one in there. Um, what What a crazy event. I, whenever I'm doing this, sometimes I want to jump back and like do more research, but then I, I got a show to do, so we don't have all this time. I could probably just spend half the episode just talking about today in history if we wanted to. We can make the whole show this segment. I'm It'd sure be, Lori would love that. It would be super easy to do. 1812, Napoleon's Grand Army crosses the Ber- Berezina River and retreat from Russia. So all these people have tried. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, just the game that's always played about you pronouncing words. All our Happy Friday yeah. long time viewers know what I mean. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, you either own it or you don't. I keep. Full I will send it, baby. I, I fumble and I keep running, baby. We just we, pick the ball we up get and back go. Up. Let's we, go. What do we got? We keep these going, man. How many people tried to invade Russia? Look, I don't agree with the current situation and the operations or whatever that's going on and trying to re-expand to have the old Soviet territories back like you know it's a different world nowadays but when are people going to learn that you can't take moscow like you can't like the nazis tried all these people have tried people are going to keep trying they, they, you can't take moscow i just hope we get some some decent human beings in there one day i don't um, agree with that 1864 a sad day in colorado history uh this is when the sand creek massacre happened A Colorado militia killed about 150 peaceful Cheyenne and Arapaho Indians, including the chief of the Cheyenne clan, uh, One Eye. So that's a a very sad moment in history that's close to us, close to our homes. 1864, wow. Yep. So I think think I've actually been there, and it's like a haunted place. I feel like that area is haunted. So if you're in Colorado, do some research on that if you want to go uh, do some ghost hunting stuff. That's definitely a location. Um this is a big one, and I had to double check. Don't read the second half of this one, Kev, because I'm going to ask you a question. So, 1877, U.S. inventor Thomas Edison demonstrate his hand cranked phonograph for the first time. What is a phonograph? Do you do you know what that is? Phonograph. A hand cranked right? phonograph. Yeah. Um, like, what is that? I would imagine it's some sort, uh, some form of uh, like communication device. So, it's just kind of it's an old record player like so the phonograph is a device that plays back sound by following a spiral groove on a rotating disc or cylinder with a stylus or so it's like the og record player yes it's like an og record player i thought it it had something to do with like a photo type of thing but i was like it's not it didn't say photograph phonograph phonograph and so um 
so yeah, the very first one, we're learning how to play back noises in 1877. and then It's come a long way. It, it's come a long way. And then I couldn't help but keep, I had to put this one on, 1944, John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore per, performs the first heart surgery wow. of its kind. So, so pretty much, uh, what is that, 80 years ago? 1944, yep. yeah, that was 80 years ago yep. today. The first open heart surgery was performed. That's crazy mm. when you think about how that far is. advancement in medicine with cardiac and you know, and all that ha- is now. I mean, open heart surgeries are happening as we speak. I know, I know. And I hope everyone pulls through those. And our hearts are with all the families that are going through tough times out there. It looks like GM is stepping up to the stage, though, to create a tough time for their competitors. Yeah, this is true. So jumping over to the F1 world, not really a sport I talk a ton about. I try to keep it mostly to American motorsports. But this is a big, big announcement for General Motors. So anyone that's been following Formula One or knows anything about it probably knows more than I do. But it's basically come down to McLaren, you know, Ferrari, Mercedes has had involvement. Those are your kind of core. No Ford? Uh, no. No. So GM, General Motors, is going to enter in 2026, so not 25. Okay. They're going to be joining in, bringing in the Cadillac. So Cadillac will be the manufacturer that will be representing General Motors. We've seen rumors that Honda is looking at NASCAR. A lot of manufacturers moving around, but this is big okay. because this is only 11th manufacturer to enter Formula One. It's, you know, which sounds like a lot. I mean, that's bigger than, than NASCAR. NASCAR is basically just Ford, Chevy, um, and Toyota, mm-hmm. soon to be Honda. Dodge left the sport a while ago. So big changes in the F1 world. That was announced this past Monday. They shook hands. The deal is done. Cadillac will be in Formula One racing at 26. Okay, that's exciting. And, you know, if I was to get a different American-made vehicle other than the Ford right now, you know, Cadillacs have always been cool, man. I think Cadillacs are cool. They're more of a luxury car. I don't really see them as a race car. I mean, yeah, yeah they have power. They definitely put some, some it's motors. It's F1. It's like a little classier. It, than, F1's a very classy style of racing. It's cla- It's like classier than NASCAR. It's different. It's just so a different. So do you think it's classier? I don't know if classier is the right word. It's just a different style. It, they have more taste? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I still <laughs> okay. think NASCAR is the greatest motorsport in the world. Yeah, um, F one has its place. It's just a different. It's just a different type of racing. Yeah, right. One where there isn't much passing happening. There's not a lot of passing in F one. Mm-hmm. You know, what's well, because those tires? Like it's so easy to flip those vehicles, right? Because the tires can catch and flip. The well, vehicle, I mean, there's right? a lot of things, that, but passing was what makes racing great in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, you don't want to just watch that. the pack. It's the problem with F one is like the top ten stays the top ten yeah. for most pretty much the whole race, and you know Max Verstappen. Yeah. Kudos to him for winning all those races over there. Can't take it away from him, but it's like, okay, he wins again. So anyway, F1 change is coming over there. Kind of kind of fun to look forward to if you're an F1 fan. I know Joey Hedge is excited. Hey, that is fun. That's fun for GM. They're going to be burning rubber out there. And we also had another person burning a different type of rubber. And as in, they were stealing rubber-soled shoes from a kindergarten cubby area. Okay. So so this is, this is what's going on. Serial shoe thief... <laughs> at kindergarten is identified as a what? It, the, the name of it was actually in the article, but I wanted to spice it up a little bit. So police set up security cameras after school students, they're, they're talking about there's 15 shoes missing. 15 different shoes missing. They're over, just gone. Over like a week. This happened earlier this month. It was like November 11th. It's got to be an animal. It was, it was November 11th. So, I'm right, aren't I? So... 15 of these things go missing and then three the following day okay so like shoes are just disappearing from this kindergarten they're cubbies there's a video about this it is in japanese um so, so if you so want to click on the link below and check so it out this take place in a japanese school yes it was in a japanese okay. school yes it was and so they end up setting up a camera of course, they're going to set it up. Who's stealing these shoes? Yeah, we want to know what's going on. Okay, so you're right. It was an animal. What kind of animal do you think it was? Probably, I mean, what kind of animal would get into a school? I mean, it's not going to be like a bear, I don't think. A bear wouldn't go after shoes. Yeah, it's a little sneaky something. It's probably like a, a raccoon or, a, you know, a weasel. Okay, yeah. Actually, it was a weasel. Was it? Yeah, a weasel was. What is a weasel? A weasel is a long, ferret-esque type of rodent. Okay. Okay. And it was sneaking in and just, it was stealing like a shoe. It wouldn't, it wouldn't steal pairs. It was just going in and just stealing one shoe one. at a time. Just one shoe at a time. They got a video of this thing going in there and he goes back for seconds. What th- what's he doing with these shoes? So animal experts believe that the weasel was a new mother and or father and that they were bringing back nesting. Right. So what do they do? What do they do? They end up putting up cubby blockers 
So hopefully that weasel got enough sneakers for their nest and they don't need any more. But that's the news that's happening in Japan. The shoe thief was caught and it was a weaselly little rodent. It was a weasel. The weasel got the shoe. The weasel got the shoe. The weasel got the shoe. The weasel got the shoe and what what is this? Uh, it's my random record. An aerial hoop. An aerial hoop uh, master. What, what have, you be? Ever, have you ever been to a circus? An aerial hoopist. An aerial hoopist? I don't think that's what they're called. <laughs> what is that? What are they called? Acrobats. They're called acrobats, yeah. <laughs> yeah an, an acrobat, acrobat a performer. An acrobatist. An acrobatist. <laughs> Do you know what an aeronaut is? An aeronaut is somebody that doesn't like to go in the air. No, an aeronaut is somebody that flies in a hot air balloon. I was going to say that there. It has nothing to do with this article. Aeronaut, not. has zero to do with this article. (laughs) Just a fun fact as we transition into the hoopist. Yeah, what do we got for Kev's random records this week? No David Rush this week. He's he's got some things in the works. He's probably going to break the record on carving the turkey the fastest or something. That guy, that guy's wild. Mm -hmm. If you haven't had a chance yet, go back and watch your episode with David Rush. Just got to give him a shout out because he's been on random records like over 40 times. So this week we have... A gal that is doing some amazing circus performing. So I I don't know much about the acrobatics, but I've seen the hoop performers where they do the somersaults in it, you know, at like a pretty rapid pace. You just see them ripping through there. So that was the record to beat, right? Or that was the record that was set that that she was trying to beat here. And she said the hardest part about uh, these records was, you know, training with them in her own time. And then at the attempt, she had to just motivate herself because she didn't have anyone there to cheer her on. Nobody was making any noise. She was all on her own. This was a lonesome full send journey for her. She had no support. No one was cheering for her. It was just, it was just while crickets. She's, while she's out here breaking the world record. Records. Nobody gave a shit. So Damn. take what you will with that information Damn. and apply it to a motivational quote for yourself. Okay. Um, so in training, she got about 45. So she had to do it in a, a time. So she ended up hold doing... On, hold on. I got the quote. I'm sorry. Okay. It doesn't matter if people are cheering for you or cheering against you. You just got to go do it yourself. You just got to go get it. <laughs> yeah, you just got to go get it. You got, you got to do I, it. I had the beginning of that. Yeah. Like, it kind of fell apart there. Some people aren't going to give a shit, and you no. got to go do it on your yeah, own. Yeah, you're doing it for you. No one's going to hold your hand through who, this. Who cares what they think? The who cares movement is strong. Dude, keep the who cares movement alive. That's that WCM, baby. Alive. All right, so she did, to, for the record, she did 53 somersaults in a time of 63.18 seconds. Think about that. That's, I mean, just about, you know, one point. One somersault per every one and a quarter second. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of rotations. That is a lot of rotations. In 63 seconds. She now holds the record. Nobody was there giving her any sort of support. And she's she's the aerial hoop, full sand, somersault and slinging new record holder. I like it. And I love how she just went for it. She just went for she, it. You know, kept focused. That long, cold, hard road. Yep. Now you're Guinness World Record Holder. And her name is, just give her some credit here, Charlotte Meath. She's 23 years old. She goes by Charlie. She likes that name, preferably. And 23 years old, out here breaking records. No one's holding her hand. No one there to root her on, and she's doing it on her own. Let's go, Charlie Meath. That's what's up. Um, so <laughs> next, what we're, <laughs> we're jumping into here <laughs> next is the Would You Rather segment. I don't like this Would You Rather. And, of course, well, we got to read the results I know. we got to get from, from last, last week. week first. Which you don't even remember what it is. I don't remember what it is. Okay, so last week we asked the viewers <laughs> – would you rather consume and digest oh, the hottest yeah. pepper yeah, of course. that you could possibly eat uh-huh. or get the worst sunburn ever okay. on your back, and that's going to take like a week to heal up? I think people are eating the pepper. Am I right? 67% of America took the sunburn. Only 33% are going with us on the pepper, Art. They're savages. They don't want to eat the pepper. Maybe they're, maybe they don't like it muy caliente. Maybe they're stomach sleepers. Well, I don't maybe know what. they sleep on their, on their tummies. That's not a good, good place to sleep. I mean, I'm a side sleeper myself, a little bit of back sleeping. So, yeah, no, I'm eating the pepper. I'm, I'm still taking the pepper. I'm still taking the pepper. America's taking the sunburn 67%, and now Art's getting ready to tell you yes. the most ridiculous would you rather I've ever heard. I still haven't made up my mind. Thank you, everybody, so much for participating in the weekly would you rather on this YouTube channel or on X. The polls are there. So this one, you know, I'm trying to keep these interesting. I'm not trying to be so boring with my would you rathers. So this one, we're getting paid. This one's like sociopath shit, though. This one, we're getting paid, but we have to put people through stuff to get paid. Okay? I don't like it. So would you rather get paid $100,000 to electrocute one of your family members to near death so they do survive this? So they receive severe electric shock, Yes. not electrocution. Yeah, and they come out fine. They come out fine. But there's a risk that they don't. But no, but they do come out fine in right. this scenario. And you get paid $100,000. You can't share it with them. It's just for you. 
just the money's just for you. Do I, can I choose who the family member is, or is it chosen at you random? You get to choose the family member. Okay. Yeah, so if you had a, 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 an awkward Thanksgiving, maybe you want to <laughs> select this one. Maybe you maybe you know who which family member you're going to electrocute. Um, so you could either get paid 100, 100K to electrocute a family member of your choice. They do not die. They come out okay. Or would you rather electrocute 10 strangers for $10,000, significantly less money, but in this scenario, you don't know when you could tur- when you have to turn it off. So there's risk to potentially kill one. Well, you of these could just ten. turn it on and off real quick. I, yeah, I'm just saying there's that there's that risk factor. Like you, there's no guarantee that all of them come out of this without harm. All right, all right. So they're both horrible. Which are you getting paid to electrocute a family member or uh, ten strangers? So I've thought about this a couple times. Obviously, family and friends first. I always try to protect my family. You know, 10 strangers, well, that's a lot of people that you're going to torment for 10 grand. It's a thousand bucks a head, potentially causing death. The first scenario, you're saying they're going to be okay. The way I would look at this thing is I would have to do it as a deal. Like I'd go in with my brother and I'd say, look, Matt, we each get 50K out of this. No, I said you can't share the money. Well, why not? What's my money? I can do what I want with it. <laughs> my money, I want it now. If they, I want to send it to him after. They don't know you get paid. I don't like the contingencies here. <laughs> I'm just making. Right. I'm making. There's this always a loophole, so I'll agree to it, and I'll. I'm trying know, to make it difficult. I'll just, I'll just be like, hey Matt, you know, here's some extra money here. Yeah. There. Bitcoin's been good to me. Yeah. Bitcoin's been good to me. I, so I if, heard you caught a random electrocutioning. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Here's 50k. Because this is the most ridiculous would you rather I've ever heard, and I have to make a selection here. I'm gonna go with that. I'm, I'm you know, see if my brother would go on board. With, sorry, Matt, but I gotta pick. Some, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it to my parents. I think my brother, could, you know, he's strong enough. Yeah, he is. You know, he's not gonna. He's gonna come out fine. We hundred grand richer. I'll take him out for a nice dinner after. Okay. Right. If it's my money. So you're electrocuting a family member. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna do the same as well. <laughs> I'm electrocuting a family member. And look, I got a big family that I a lot of them I don't even know, and I don't even talk to. No, so, it's got to be someone close family. No, they, what, now you can well, make up yeah, rules. Yeah, this is my segment. <laughs> okay, so it has to be a close family member. Okay, I think so. You can make immediate, some rules up. Immediate family. Uh, that, I mean, it's I have immediate family like uncles and cousins. Is a cousin immediate? I don't think so. No. I think immediate's like mom, dad, brother, sister, kids. Okay. Is I that could be it? wrong about that. That's the way I understand it. Is that it? Okay. I'm probably wrong. All right. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm electrocuting my immediate family member for the big payout and guaranteed no bodily harm or death or injury this from electrocuting. This sociopath shit. Which one are you going to choose, America? Are you going to electrocute a family member or 10 strangers? 100K for the family member, 10K for the strangers obviously we had another a bunch of clauses and rules in there yeah and which I'll, one are you gonna pick i'll have to be careful when, <laughs> when you go over to our twitter x at happy fry fri get to do this poll i'm hoping that it doesn't throw a flag up the poll when i talk about having to electrocute people say zap <laughs> just type zap in there all right would you rather zap yeah yeah no, because then it doesn't sound as bad okay w- would you rather send a l- electric currents it's still fucked up. Send electric current. If Twitter X doesn't pull it down, go take the poll <laughs> over there, and I don't get flagged for some sociopath shit. <laughs> it's called so- electric currents. I'll okay. figure it out. Okay, but that's always a fun one. I had to keep it interesting on right. this, and we're going to keep moving forward. You know, students accuse teachers of a lot of things, but in this case, what are they accusing teachers of this time? Uh, well, so it's actually... The, w- the way this goes down is a student got access to their teacher's credit card. Somehow, oh, okay. whether they took a photo of it on their phone, and they started racking up PlayStation Store Okay, purchases. so I said that backwards. Correct. Okay. Yes, the kid is being charged okay. with theft because that's what, you know, that's what it is. Okay. Stole the credit card, racked up. The, you know, the teacher's like, why am I getting calls about $1,000 to PlayStation Store? I don't even have a PlayStation. And so they had to start investigating. Okay. And they were able to narrow it, narrow it down. This took place like last week, week before, something like that. Found the total charges were $1,056 on a credit card that was to PlayStation's website. Obviously, you know, there's going to be some police involvement here because that is not Petty Larson. That yeah. is now misdemeanor L- Larson. Yeah. I mean, that's, what, what's the cutoff? I don't... I think anything over 2500 is felony. Okay. Anything under 500 is petty. Hmm. And so he's kind of in that in between. Okay. I, I might be making this shit up. I yeah, don't even, we don't know here. I have no fucking clue. Yeah, we are not lawyers. But that's the way I, I believe it's that way. Um, so in any case, steals the teacher's credit card, racks up the game pass. This boy's going to learn pretty young. You can't do shit like this. You just can't do it, man. I mean, yeah. how, how are they not going to find out? 
Like you know, you, because you because th- until you learn the hard way, that's fair. I did sometimes. some stupid shit in school. Oh yeah. Did I ever tell you that story when I I uh, vandalized bus seats, like on the school bus? I got with like a lighter, like no, making a with, smiley no, face with or a, whatever, like a box cutter. I just I was such an. Why would you do that? Because I was an idiot. What would the bus seats do? I was you? an absolute idiot. I got so I got suspended. I'm, my mom remembers this. I, she was pissed. I my parents were bet. fucking pissed. I they, made, they made me pay for all the damages out of my pocket. Mom, dad didn't pay shit. How much was it? It was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Um, I got kicked off the bus for 30 days, so I had to find other means of transportation to school. I was suspended for a couple days. I was an idiot for vandalizing the bus. So I had to learn, you don't do that shit. Yeah. This kid's going to learn. Hopefully, it's a valuable lesson. That's beta behavior. It's just unnecessary. Yeah. It's on. It's a, it's. You don't do that. No, you don't. And so, look, look, I've done a lot of dumb things too. That that's part of growing up. Ho- yep. Hopefully, you could just learn these lessons faster, and you're not repeating the same mistakes and staying in the same patterns. Needless to say, I never vandalized anything ever again. Yeah, that's so, good. Right. That's good. So hopefully, this kid doesn't steal ever again. Mm-hmm. That's the hope here. That is good. Um, that he got caught and hopefully learned some <laughs> lessons. I mean, look, you think you can get away with the stuff? We had an article of some lady that was duping the, uh, the gas. The, like, car, yeah, the card system at the gas machine yeah. and whatever. And then, like, she had to pay for that. Like, You're always going to have people that try to find a loophole. That's yeah. never going to go away. Yeah. And everything has a price on it and a consequence, and you got to pay the price. I don't care if it's financially, emotionally. Everything you do, we all reap what we sow. Copy that. These are the facts. Today's Black Friday. Okay, so there's a bunch of buys out there. You know, Amazon's been trying to get us on all week. They're like, we got this whole weekly Black Friday sale. So, what is some, this article? What is this website? I mean, so this website is a lot of clickbait. Um, daily, daily Viving Tech, Viving Tech.com. I think it was probably Living Tech. Maybe I spelled that incorrectly because I was typing it in. <laughs> Either way, they had this list of like 50 different. Uh, most awesome Black Friday special things that you could buy at major discount that's going to change your life. And look, there's some cool items in here. Like there's like this uh, this stopwatch thing where you they say they say that you plug it in and then it like helps redirect the ampage in your house to save up to ninety percent on your electric bills. I I don't know if that's true or not. But it sounds like a fun techie thing to get. You got the boomerang ball, which is basically like a drone sphere that flies around. I don't know what any of this shit is. You know? Miracle sheets? What the hell Miracle are those? sheets. These are apparently the cleanest sheets ever invented because of how they're made. Like, it's anti-microbial. Cry, cry <laughs> anti-microbial. Okay. okay. Does that mean that is it like water resistant? It's it's different things like that. I didn't have enough space to fit it all in. Miracle into the seats sound like you could do some mir- miracles in the bedroom. Hey, you know, sometimes flexibility is is a uh, is a talent that is perceived as a miracle. Um, <laughs> we got a mobile Wi-Fi creator. All of the cell phone networks don't want you to have this one. Oh, no. And and because it basically just creates a mobile Wi-Fi spot out wherever you are. There's heated vests. There's more. Okay. So there's all these things. That, it's a typical Black yeah, Friday, right? Yeah, yeah. And look, it's so much fun to buy stuff. But I'm bringing this one up because recently I've like really noticed that I just I just spend probably two, three hundred bucks on shit I don't need every single month. And I have um, like the Amazon slash phone addiction. It's, it's, a, it's an addiction. Yeah. No, 100%. To, to like buying shit. It's an addiction. Yes. Yeah, so, Cause so it's like I'm Christmas every that. day when that shit shows up and it's so much fun. It is. But do you really need this stuff? It's a bunch of and drunk. Also like, sure. It might be fun. Only treat yourself if you can afford it. I, I've made the mistake of racking up credit card debt to buy dumb shit on Amazon. Like that's really a dumb way to spend your money. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Using I mean, your credit card to buy things you don't need is stupid. I mean, we put a lot of the studio stuff on credit. Hey, we, we needed that. But we paid it back. Yeah, and we needed it. Right, we needed so, it. So so heed my warning there. And then also, if you do want to do some shopping, because, hey, you know, Christmas is coming up. It's fun to buy people gifts. It is fun to give. And tis the season. So if you're really out here trying to grab these best deals, first of all, I would stick... Personally, I'm, I'm more of a cyber type guy. 
Like I'm buying online. I've never been the type to need to go to the store and wait for it to open and then no. people stampede in. I, do the, people still do that? Yeah, I think so, but that was more like the late 90s and the 2000s yeah. Yeah. when it got really competitive. Best Buy, Walmart, yeah. they'd and have TVs and shit. Yeah, they didn't sell anything online back then. No, so of course the stores were completely yeah. – but that's back when the girl got completely trampled in, mm. in, in Rhode Island. She was pregnant. Yeah. The, a woman got her ear bit off over a fucking Furby. Let's tighten it up, America. Yeah. Let's yeah. be fucking nice on Black Friday. Yeah, for real. So and I'm, every day of the year. Yeah, so I'm going, I'm going uh, cyber here. Here. And if you are shopping a lot on Amazon, heed this warning because you might be able to find a better price elsewhere. They put in all, all this stuff on there where it's like, oh, 50% off. And like they can make up, they mark up whatever and then, yep. they want. They can put oh, whatever absolutely. they want there. It's a marketing machine. Yeah. And it's and it's designed to keep you coming in just like McDonald's and all the drugs in their burgers. <laughs> OK, so so if you really want that item, maybe just do some more researching. You might be able to find it on another a competitor's website for less and that is my hot take on black friday yeah look there's some good deals to be had out there it's a great time to get some christmas shopping done try to take advantage of those deals like art said though shop around do your own price research because i've i've definitely seen things like spices and things that i buy live action on there whatever mm-hmm. rubs for for the traeger way overpriced on amazon i can go to my king supers and get it for for way less so mm-hmm. Yes, you're paying for the convenience of not having to leave your house. The shit comes to your door. I get all that. Believe me, I, there's things I do order on there pretty religiously that I need that I can't necessarily buy in a brick and mortar. So use your discretion on it. Let's not go crazy with it. Obviously, it simulates the economy, all this shopping. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, Kev, I do got to say, you're looking awful handsome tonight. Thank you're you. You're looking good. You got new glasses on the day. Uh, you're not, not today, but new spectacles that you're wearing every other day. Correct. Um, well, and your hair is also looking awful nice, too. You probably use some kind of product in that, right? That would be correct. So this next article, we're talking about a beer product that was contaminated. This is a wild article. I always try to find this wild <laughs> shit. Good. That was a great introduction, Art. You can tell we've been doing this a while. Um, so <laughs> a worker. All right, look, this guy is an idiot. I, You know I like to highlight idiots like the, the lad that you supported a few weeks ago that fucking fled the country. And yeah. What an, he guy was a moron. Yeah, but is he still getting is he still getting away with it? I want it? to talk about him. All right, <laughs> I'm done with him. This week's idiot is Jordan Fitzpatrick. Okay, okay. Great. Jordan Fitzpatrick is an idiot. Okay. So here's what he did. He got into an altercation with his boss at work. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've all been in this position. You, you, things we aren't going well. We don't know what well. it's about, though, right? We, we don't know. We just, don't know exactly what the okay. he just said. It was following an argument. Yeah. This guy decided he thought it was a good idea to pray, play a practical joke that went just a little bit too far, Art. Okay. He <laughs> masturbated and ejaculated into the boss's beard balm. Okay? That was the, that was the joke okay. that he was trying to play. A joke? Uh, he considered it a joke. Oh. He's, they're labeling him a jokester in this article here, whoever is, wrote is this. Is he not going to jail? Oh, yeah. So it, it, we're, we're getting there. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm saying like. So here's where he really fucked up. Number one, he's an idiot for doing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Guys, yeah. s- seriously. I mean, this guy's dumber than the kid stealing the, the PlayStation ball. shit. All right? So then he boasted about it. He started bragging about it at the, at the water cooler, telling people at oh. lunch, hey, guys, check this out. I fucking, you know, jerked off in his, like, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. You think everyone's just going to be like, oh, good, great job, Jordan. Yeah. Employee of the month. Yeah. Next time I should talk to you, I hope that we have a dispute so I can... Get jizz in my beard. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> what the fuck? It's, it's so fucked up. That's so stupid of them to go running their mouth. No motor mouthing out there, people. Tighten it up. No flappies. No flappies. No flaps. Just keep the flaps tight. Yeah. Just fuck, keep it zipped. Yeah. Keep keep all your business to yourself. No one fucking cares. So now, obviously, <laughs> nobody cares. So then the sheriff got involved, of course, because, you know, this is fuck. This is sexual assault. Yeah. Is ultimately what it is. One time in my in, uh, ta- uh, in a town that <laughs> n- neighbors where I grew up in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, a town called Ossipee. Okay. There was a Dunkin' Donuts there, and a man masturbated into a Boston cream donut. He had carried the herpes virus. A woman ate it and had a herpes outbreak. Oh, my God. Okay. So That's there's so some bad. sick fucking people out there. That is bad. And this was a long time ago. That's bad. All right. Apparently, I'm in story mode telling. So Fre- Frederick, what was this guy's name? Jordan Fitzpatrick. So Fitzpatrick, what did he do? Did he like went and grabbed the bomb, went to the bathroom with it, did it in there, yeah, and probably. then like mixed it all up? Probably, yeah. And then like put it back? Yeah. And was like scheming? <laughs> Yeah, most likely. That kind of shit. That's exactly what I think he did. So, sheriff gets involved. Word gets back to the boss. He's like, this is fucked up. They sent the contents of the beard bomb for DNA forensic analysis. Yeah. Right? Because he could have been full of shit. He could have just said he did it. Came back. Mm -hmm. Came back to the 25-year-old Jordan Fitzpatrick. His DNA was in there. His semen was mixed into this bottle. (laughs) 
<laughs> and it's just disgusting. It's terrible. Now Jordan's known as a bomb blower. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. Yeah, Fitzpatrick on, is the dumbass of the week. If you're, if you're going to do stuff like this, keep it to yourself. Yeah, and so... He, don't even tell anybody. Yeah, you, yeah well, don't, he, don't, don't do well, it at all. He probably would have gotten away with it if you didn't tell anybody. But just don't even do it yeah, at don't all. Yeah, do don't do that I don't stuff, encourage guys. this type yeah, of this behavior. Guys, guys, don't do that. So he is currently in mitigation... <laughs> There, you know, his plea, he hasn't accepted a plea offer yet. Mm-hmm. He's obviously going to have to accept guilt here. We will know on December 4th when he appears uh, for this this hearing. Okay, so we're going to set a calendar reminder to follow up on this? I don't know. We might we might circle back to it. There's, there's a few court cases we never followed back we're up We're never going to hear about this again. This Friday. is the last time you hear his name, Jordan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> what a complete idiot. <laughs> and that's a hell of a show, except for we got a weekend coming up. And one thing that you should do is take down those Halloween decorations. Look. It's okay if you leave Those them up. should have been down a long time ago. It's okay if you leave them up for a while, but it's we're coming into December, so it's time to take down the Halloween direct decorations. However, I did want to mention that if Halloween is life for you, and that's just, like, it's okay. You can leave them up. I mean, I know people are putting their Christmas tree up in, like, September. I did just put mine up. You know, if it's going to make people happy. It's not a mega tree, though. It's like the size of the fern over your head, over your shoulder. No, that's per- that's perfect. That's about the size of my tree. Yeah, that's perfect. So, and it's super easy. That's perfect that's, for that's apartment. Good, that's good advice, Art, for the folks that still have pumpkins and, you know, ghosts and goblins on the walls. Yeah. It's time to transition into the festive time, and you know, or just do whatever the hell you want. Decorate your house how you want. I don't really care. That's true. You know, you can make it spooky all year if you want. If you want it spooky, you know, and the ghosts and, sh- and shit are your thing. But if you're if you're keeping up with the Joneses, now it's time. It's time to bring them down. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. People probably already got all their Thanksgiving stuff up if they're so. Like you know, we go through this time of the year where it's like Halloween decorations, Thanksgiving decorations, Christmas decorations, New Year's decorations. I don't decorate for New Year's. And then and then what's next? Uh, we got St. Patty's decorations. Uh, people probably do it for Valentine's. And then they put East, like hearts and Eastern stuff up. Eastern decorations. Yeah, Easter's I mi- a bunch of bunnies. I miss Valentine's like spring Day. Spring stuff. I miss and then that. you got Fourth of July, the flag, the American flags, and that's stuff a fun up. holiday. Um, Fourth of July and Thanksgiving I mean, are my two favorite holidays. Come on, Independence Day, baby, let's go. Oh, America, all day long, all day like strong. That. Happy Friday, America, baby. Happy Friday. USA. My other thing that I want to mention here is don't let those leftovers go to waste. People cooked in the kitchen with love in their heart and helped make this food. Let's not let it go to waste. Yeah, we did an article last year on last year's Happy Friday of what, some, some creative leftover ideas. And oh, there's actually a lot of fun stuff out there. And that's when Cody actually talked about waffling it up. Yeah, he we did. We were talking about Thanksgiving leftovers. Yeah, put it in a, make it into a waffle maker. Yeah. He didn't talk about that on last week's episode. No, but, but it's way a few years ago. Yeah. So good advice there. The leftovers are definitely fun. I'm going to be eating some here uh, <laughs> shortly. So some other things you probably should do this weekend. You know, he had family over, so there was a lot of cleaning going on. You got to clean that vacuum out. Yep. You got to empty the receptacle. If that thing's packed full of dust and debris, you got to get that out of there. got to get it out of there. Clean the vacuum. I'm telling you, it makes for a better sucking experience. It does. So it does. some other things you could do, if you're from my neck of the, where, where I grew up in New England, this is about the time of year where we used to get a cord of wood delivered okay. right? for, for wood-burning homes that have wood stoves. That's a nice of, smell. A lot of people do this in background. For, I don't see it a lot out here mm-hmm. in Colorado. I know Aspen has a lot of wood burning stoves, places like that. So stack some wood this weekend, right? You got to get ready for the winter. It's here. It's coming just a couple weeks away. A cold weather's here to stay. Stacking wood is a, is quite a process art. I mean, we used to go out there and I would have just stacks running across the yard. You know, you got to get that wood stacked so it can dry out. You don't want just a pile of wood in your yard that you're pulling in. You got to get it organized. It gets moist that way. You want to keep it nice and dry. Critters yeah. and shit in it. Stack the wood. Fill the wood rack, as my mommy say, the wood whack, uh, in your home, and get ready if you have a wood burning stove. I feel like that's a that's what we used to do after Thanksgiving. I think that's a, I think that's a good one. So that's something you could do this weekend. On top of what, anything else you want to do, this is America, baby, and we have freedom. And I love freedom. And I have the freedom to close this son bitch down. So be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. Instagram and Facebook, of course, at Happy Friday USA. Twitter X, where hopefully they didn't remove my poll that I put up. Over there at Happy Fry USA, that's F-R-I. We do have an email account. No one ever sends us any. So if you'd like to, you could do that at happyfriday at gmail.com. And, you know. Happy Friday America. Yeah, Happy Friday America. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. Mm-hmm. You could send us an email there. Probably the best way to get in touch, though, would be through Instagram, I think. Just send us a direct message over there. Art and mm-hmm. I try to respond in a timely manner. He's a little bit better at that than I am, but I'm going to tighten it up. And I'm telling you who's going to tighten you up right now. That's the freaking shit is, baby. Happy Friday, America. Happy Friday America.